Robbie, great to catch up again. It's been a while. Um, 11 games into the new season, six of which have come into the league. Um, what have you made of it so far? Well, the, you'd say in the league that the only the one blip written away when we were extremely poor. 1-0 um, defeat. Um, our home form, obviously two games at home. Um, scoring eight goals, haven't conceded at home yet in the league. Um, and in total, 17 goals, 4-2 against in the league, which is fantastic. Um, I've been... If you look at the league table, obviously, we're delighted. Absolutely delighted. But in terms of performances... Um, you know, especially away from home. There's a big argument to say, listen, you win a game, you win a game of football one nil, it's a win, three points. No matter if you win five nil or one nil, um, a win's a win, and I understand that. But in terms of the squad assembled at this level, considering our pre-season form, you know, playing teams against in higher opposition, in terms of performances at times, I've been quite disappointed. Um, you know, up until we went to. Um, Rams bottom with a 5 0 win. Um, the game changed on the stroke of half time with the sending off. Um, up until that point, you know, Kenji had a couple of good chances, but Pitaluga once again made a remarkable save for us to go 1 0 down. Um, then you look at the performances. Um, City Liverpool um, didn't play good again, but 1 1 0. Um, so, our away performances have inevitably with the exception of Witten we've got maximum points so how can you argue but me being me uh, and looking for the highest quality with the expectation of the squad we've built you know you can't go around winning games 4, 5, 6 nil every single week I get that and inevitably at the end of the season if, if promotion is the is the end goal and we've won the league by winning games 1-0 obviously you know you'd take that but you know I've been at times disappointed with the way we've played in terms of not scoring more goals but inevitably six games in 15 points um, 17 goals 4-2 against it's really hard to argue with the league position top of the league um, so and, and four of them have been away from home and we've got a, such a good run of games now coming up at home so the league um the table doesn't lie with top. You say the table doesn't lie, but in some respects it is still a false table due to the fact of our games in hand as well. Yeah, it is, but people are saying, you know, we, uh, you know, what is it, a couple of points clear um, with two games in hand, but if you're looking, I think we're only real four points clear because there's teams on the same amount of games as us who are probably in fourth, fifth, sixth position. So we're only four points clear in, in, in realistic terms. We are, yes, where we got games in hand over the teams, I think, in second, third and fourth. Um, we've played eight, Leek being one, I think, Mosley. Um, but I think it's, is it, um, um, there's somebody on, on 11 points or 10 points on the same number of games. So we're not, you know, we're not, you know, we haven't got games in hand over those teams, but we are four or five points clear. So, um, so inevitably, of course, we're happy, but, Let's make you know. Let's be totally and truthful here that we should be top of the league with that squad, and I'm disappointed that we haven't got a minimum of sixteen points, you know, out of eighteen. Because I don't think Witten. I think we didn't play well. I thought we were poor, but credit to Witten. Um, everybody says now it's everybody else's cup final. That for me is is, you know, is now an excuse if you don't win games or if you don't play well. Because it should be our cup final as well, you know, playing in front of that many fans, the away following, which is immense. The fans have been fantastic. So, our players are now used to it. Eighteen months in, they're used to every game like that. So we should be adapting. We should, you know, we recruited, you know, well in the summer, unbelievably well, you know. And I've heard a few people say, "Well, we've had injuries." Well, we never make excuses at this football club out of injuries because the squad we've got, if you're replacing. One player, another top quality player is coming in. And let's be fair, our bench would get in most teams starting at, in this league. So let's let's be honest that we never make excuses. So I'm not having the fact that well, maybe we've had one or two injuries, the back four's been disrupted. We've got a fantastic squad. So, um, yes, we're happy being top of the league, but 
I believe we should have more points in the league. And just finally, in terms of the league campaign, you must be delighted that, that now at least we've got quite a few home games coming up. Yeah, we are, of course. You know, people always go on about our budget, you know, which we know is 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 a, is a big one at these levels. But the quality of play we've got is, I believe, that budget for that quality of play, you're probably looking at double for what he got it for. There's that good a quality of player. So even though our budget is, you know, big. I still believe it's low for the quality of player we've brought in. Because if somebody said to you, your budget's half a million pound, you look at that squad and think it's probably an half a million pound squad. You know, um, it's, it's half that. We know that. Um, which is still huge for these levels. So there's no excuses. There's no excuses for us. Um, but again, with the amount of away games we've had in the cup runs, you know, we've not been able to, you know, generate um, the money from what we take on a match day in terms of the walk-ups, the bars, you know, the fan zone, um, programs, you know, merchandise. So, yes, you know, it's been great to go on the road and win games, but there's nothing like playing the leasing dot com with the fan base, you know, being at home, um, all the new fans we have here as well. Um, but again, you know, the loss of revenue on match days, you know, we will get them back, of course, we'll. But the big difference is with the cup runs that. You're moving games to Tuesday nights rather than Saturday afternoon, so yeah. it does impact. It does impact, you know, um, what we do, and I don't people to feel sorry for us, of course, because we're in a fantastic position, and you know, again, there'll be a lot of envy, a lot of jealousy, um, but we're in it, you know. So it's nice to see that the amount of home games we've got coming up. Talking about cup games, um, you set targets at the start of the season. One, we're on track with one. Obviously, after the events of last weekend, we're not. How would you summarise our cup progression? FA Trophy, um, obviously Tagcaster, um, 7-0. I thought the lads, for the first time this season, have played well in two halves. That's been the hugely disappointing thing. And I've heard you on interviews, Bob. You know, I see, read everything, hear everything. You know, some of the questions you've asked the manager in terms of why can't we sustain it for two halves? And... I don't know why. Um, you know, it comes from within as a player. It comes from the sidelines. It comes from communication. It comes from a willingness to be ruthless. Um, you know, because we do work hard. The lads work hard. They're the fittest team in the in the in the league. They have more contact time than anybody else. They've got the best facility. They've they have breakfast in the morning if if they want it. They've got everything. You know, so. For us not to sustain two halves of football consecutively is, you know, is is strange. Um, maybe there has to be more communication from the side. Maybe there has to be a, a drive and a determination to let not let standards slip. Um, you know, and I want to see more of that because we can. You know, when I'm watching us and I'm seeing us play half good then you don't know what you're going to get in the second half if we play a good first half you don't know what we're going to get you don't know what we're going to get on a, on a 90 minute basis and um, the tag caster game was the first time this season we've probably played well for 90 minutes and it, and you can see what happens because of the enthusiasm because of the desire because of the ruthless nature if you go get score two or three you want to score six seven eight and that's what we want to do so we obviously got the big game against Widnes, who we've scored five against this season. They've had a change of manager. They'll be set up differently. Um, so, but it's about us, you know. I, I, I hear so many people saying about, you know, how the opposition set up. It's about us and what we do as a group. It's about our changes. It's about our structure. You know, I think we've had too many changes of shape um, this season. Um, you know, if you look at Man City. Man City have the same shape every single week and they're relentless in what they do. And if they can't break a team down, they keep doing it, they keep doing it. You know, but I see us as a group, you know, change systems so many times. So I just think we've got to believe in ourselves more, believe in our group more, um, and just be relentless. Teams are going to sit back. Teams are going to sit back. Um, but it's about us doing the right things time and time and time again. You know, in training and on a match day to break opposition down and tag cast that we've done exceptionally well. You mentioned about changes in shape. Is that something that you yourself can have an influence on or is it something you just leave to the manager? Well, as director of football, I, I got a look at all the teams in this in, in at the club and 
you know, the recruitment strategy in the summer from myself and Jimmy with the manager was to, with teams sitting back and, you know, when John McMahon helped us out last season, we went to a 4-3-3 um, with the wide players in, uh, and uh, um, coming inside and the full backs got on the outside. And for the last 15, 20 games of the season, we've done that remarkably well. The patterns would look fantastic. This season, we knew teams would sit back. We're going into a high league, so we thought, let's, let's recruit a, a number 10. Um, to create four lines, so the four, two, three, one, um, um, and we recruited Alex Curran, um, who has, has already got was it six goals this season, um, but Alex has had to play in a midfield three at times. He's got a wide and not really played as a false nine, um, and when you play if if Alex was playing as a false nine, I think that all come about was it against York or Buxton when I think Tom Clare was injured. You know, you're going into this season with Tom Clare thinking, right, he's our focal point. Let's build, you know, how do we structure off Tom Clare? And we thought, let's see if we can get a number 10 in Alex Curran who can impact Tom Clare in around him with the knockdowns, you know, and Tom Clare getting the half turn in the spaces. That'll really benefit the side. But, you know, when Tom got injured and Alex went as a false nine with a diamond, it worked exceptionally well. But what you can't do then when you've got Alex Curran as a false nine like we did in the FA Cup, you can't smash balls from back to front with a false nine. And at times where, you know, the structure, you know, helps you is then that was crying out for Tom Clare to come on with half an hour to go. You know, but the manager and his coaching staff have to make those decisions. You know, I'm not there. I'm on the TV at times. I was at that game, but I left early. I had to go and do six or six. I got in the car at nil nil. You know, but watching it, it was crying out for Tom Clare. It didn't happen. We lost the game. And the naivety in losing that game when you watch the game back, me as a dead of football, was it was so poor as a collective group. We're away from home in the FA Cup against Colville. Fantastic football club, treated us really well. Got us a cake. It was Rob's birthday. Got Rob a cake. It was Rob's birthday. Um, but... I know if we'd have brought them back here to this stadium, we would have probably won the game. And the impact of us losing is revenue. It would have been a replay, this prize money. And I believe we, I believe on the night here, we would have won the game. Credit to Colville. But what happens is, with two minutes to go away from home, you've got a draw. Surely, you say, right, we've got a draw. We're not going out there, FA Cup. We're going to bring them back here on the Tuesday. Yet, we put a ball in the box. We had eight players in the box. The second ball comes out, put it back in again, they break 2v2 at the back. Brandon Lee commits a foul, it was a foul. They put the ball in the box, they score without the cup. So for me, with for me, you know, what I've learned in my career is right, game management on and off the pitch. You look at the situation, we've got a replay, you keep the ball, keep the ball. We've got players in the team and keep ball, you won't get the ball off them. Or you put the ball in the corner, you leave your four at the back, two in front, take your replay. But we didn't. We went for the win. And the mentality of this football club may be the fact that with the pressures on it, you feel that you have to win every game. But there's times in football, times in games, where you've just got to think, do you know what? We've got a replay. Yeah? We've got a replay. And if we'd have got a home draw, you're looking at 15, 20, 30 grand, which that defeat may have cost us. And then you're one or two rounds away from the first round proper, which I believe we could have got to. So I was really disappointed, myself and Rob, you know, in the naivety of, of the group, to be honest with you. You know, we've had conversations and it wasn't acceptable. So now we look at the FA Trophy and we think, right, OK, how far can we go in that competition? I want to get to the quarterfinal. I want to get to the quarterfinal. Um, there's prize money at stake. You know, why can't we? The squad, of, the squad is good enough. It's proven it's good enough, you know, to get far in cup competitions. And the cup competition of this club haven't been good enough. Um, so there's big pressure when this are going to come in the FA Trophy and obviously the different manager good luck to them but you know this squad's good enough to easily win that game I expect us to win the game um, so yeah that was a real disappointing moment in, in our season and you're looking at other teams below us who've got into the third you know qualifying round playing against higher opposition so that was a real real disappointing moment in our season this time last year um, we had a very unsettled squad. Didn't we? This time round, we 
seem to be more settled. So the question is, as we sit here now, are you happy with the squad that we've assembled? Am I happy with the squad that assembled? Well, you could, every time we go somewhere, every time, you know, you listen to managers, they're always the underdogs. Even when we play a higher position, why are the underdogs? Because they look at our squad on paper and they think, wow, how on earth are they attracted to the likes of Luke Murphy, Nicky Maynard, you know, Kenji, um, Berry, um, Zeki Friars, you know, Neil Dans, Mark Duffy. Um, you could, the list could fence them. Um, Mendy. No, the, the list is endless. Every single player. This squad is the best ever assembled at this level of football and the level above probably and it will continue to grow and develop and listen is it people say is it is the squad done you can never say done if it, if it had been a transfer window now it, just say at our levels you would be completely comfortable happy more than happy ecstatic with this squad simple but you know the nature it is that um you can recruit um we've had injuries i've said but we're not so what the people have come in are equally as good. If not, there's argument to say, you know, the players start on the bench, are they better than the ones who start? There's an argument to say that. It's a game of opinions. There's an argument to say, if Nicky Maynard starts, is Tom Clare, you know, um, um, due a game. So I was delighted for Tom Clare tonight um, because, you know, when you recruit and you look at patterns, you look at formations, and when the manager decided to go with a diamond, the false nine is really a number 10. You know, coming... So when you have a, the false nine, you really play with the two inside forwards and then the false nine there. So that means you need pace in those two forwards with Barry and Kenji have. So Tom Clare didn't really suit that position or the false nine because he's a target man pinning his centre half. So the formation really dictated, you know, Tom would be an impact player. And that's why I could not get it at Colville, which again still frustrates me because it was crying out for Tom Clare after after 60 minutes. In both boxes, by the way. In both boxes, because they were going to launch, the, the only way they looked like going to score, they missed a penalty, yes, but from set pieces. So I think that was, that us as a club got it wrong. Got it wrong without their fake cup. So going back to you, are we happy with the squad? Yes. Listen, there might be one or two more before the end of the season. No doubt about it because... What we don't want at this football club is people to be in the comfort zone. You know, whatever position they're in, as soon as we get in the comfort zone, we'll, we'll look to change. Because myself and Rob have put too much, and our staff, you included, all the staff, have put too much hard work, desire, dedication, hour after hour, for us not to achieve what we want to achieve. We've already missed out on one goal, that was getting the FA Cup first round, which has not been acceptable. So now we look at FA Trophy, and the league. Top of the league, performances have to improve. Away form has to, you know, away performances, and you might say to me, well, we won 1 0. And it's a fair argument, I get it. Because in the record books, in 20 years' time, people aren't going to say we didn't play very well. You won the game 1 0. Get it? Stats. I guess, I guess the question is if we win every game now 1 0 to the end of the season, would you take you, it? You, would you take it? <laughs> Yeah, because I can't win this answer. <laughs> you can't win this answer because yeah. uh, the business side, of course you would. Of course you would. But we would entertain. The players we have at our disposal, you know, believe they can win every game 3 or 4 nil. You know, and they need to be guided in that way. But to answer your question, of course you would because at the record books end of the season, we've won the league and we got promoted. And, you know, then the fan base grows. You know, you see more... Youngsters around Macclesfield wearing Macclesfield tops. Um, so, of course you would, Bob, of course you would. But I just think, on a whole, I think, you know, I, I stand with fans. I listen to fans. You listen to fans. Rob listens to fans. We read stuff. And a lot of things that the uh, fans have an opinion, I, I've agreed with. I've agreed with in terms of not utilising these players in certain times, substitutions. So I, I do read it all and I do understand it. And there's reasons behind it. You know, when you're in here every single day, you know, Joe Bunny didn't play against um, Colville away. Joe Bunny against West Disbury got clattered in the ribs and he went for an extra thought he broke a rib and he was struggling. You know, and he couldn't, he, he was on the bench, I think, Joe against Colville. 
wasn't quite ready to play. So obviously then Zeki, Zeki Fry is coming, he's played in the Premier League. So when you talk about squad and injuries, Joe Bunny's injured. Listen, we've not conceded a goal with Joe Bunny in the team yet. Zeki Fryers comes in. So this is the quality of squad we've got. So to sum up the season, top of the league, um, but I'd have been happy with 16 or 18 points because the squad and the teams we've played, we could have, should have had that. Performances have to improve in terms of, um, the, you know, a structure and identity because I think we've changed formations too much. Um, but on a whole, really happy with the FA Trophy, really happy with the league position. FA Cup, not acceptable. Not acceptable. Um, and it's OK people saying, well, you know, they were a high league. Our budget was bigger. We got a better squad. And the na naivety of us not to bring them back here, where I believe would have won the game and the financial loss to the club, you know, people don't see that. It's all, oh, it's all right. Look, they've got this, that. No, it counts. So now with the light, we've got the home games. I urge people now to come and see the home games. You know, utilise the fan zone. Utilise, you know, the bars. So, again, thank you for the support. The support's once again been amazing. I'd like us to be louder. You know, West Ham's been in Charlton game. I wasn't there, but I've heard the, heard it. The new thing I'm seeing now is we have fake crowd noise in at the stadium, which, again, Wow. Is there anything else people want to throw at us that we're making that up now? Because we've got fake crowd noise when we score, which is bizarre. So, um, but again, we're in, a, we're in a great place. Um, uh, um, but we want to get better and starting at the weekend. Brilliant. Thanks, Robbie.